this morning, if, if I give a title to uh, what we're going to talk about this morning, I'm going to call it Just Believe. Oh, come on. Amen. Just Believe. Um, you know, and uh, we're going to go on a journey. So I want you, I want your hearts to be open this morning to be able to receive what it is that I'm going to share. But the definition of the word believe is this. It means to accept something as true. To feel sure of the truth of. Meaning, when you know something to be true, deep inside, you believe it to be the truth. Oh, yeah. Come on, right? So that's what the definition of believe means. Um, you know, we currently, we find ourselves in a, in a, in a difficult time. And, and I don't believe anybody that, that I know, I don't believe there's anybody that I know in this generation that has, has experienced anything like this before. I believe the, the last time we saw something like this was in 1917, 1910. Um, and of course, I was born in not that time. <laughs> Praise God. You know, but, but that was the last time we have seen anything to the magnitude of, of this. So there's, there's not a formula. We don't have a formula on how we're supposed to respond. We don't know how it is, you know, and I'm going to tell you what, as, as, a, as an, a, an apostle or a pastor, an evangelist, a teacher, there's, there's not a way that we respond that is probably going to be the correct way. We're going to, because, you know, not only, even with us, we, you know, we've had to make some decisions in what we're doing that some people may not agree with, you know. Keep the doors open. Shut the doors. You know, and, and but, you know, I read this somewhere on, on social media that, you know, have grace for your leadership. Because they've never pastored during a, a global pandemic before. They've never had to make a decision based on what's happening and on this global scale of, of this this. Va- viral infection that we're seeing all over the world. We have never had a generation have to endure what it is that we're going through right now. And we're all going through it together. Every one of us. Every one of you that's watching. You know, in Matthew 24, Matthew 24, it speaks about a great tribulation that's to come. And it's pretty, pretty detailed when it speaks about this. Then in Daniel 12, it speaks about great, the great darkness that's going to cover the earth. It talks about the great darkness that covers the earth. And, you know, I don't like to watch the news, but because we have to fall under certain guidelines and, and regulations, I'm forced to watch the the governor, as he comes out every day with his briefing, he comes out with a briefing, and then after he comes out with the briefing, then he comes out with the medical professional that comes in, Dr. So-and-so, comes forth, and she begins to deliver her statistics and the global, uh, everything that's happening, and they call them models. Well, according to this model, this is what's going to happen. And according to this model, we're going to see this happen. And see... What's happened is Daniel 12 talks about that there would be a time that would come that that darkness would cover the earth. He says darkness would cover the earth. So they come and they bring this map on. They put this big old map and they show, now this is the hot spot. And this is another hot spot. And, And before you know it, the whole map is covered and it's dark. It's like this darkness has covered the map. Now, I'm not saying that we're living in that time of, of that prophetic word. I'm not, that's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying, that there is going to come a time that we're, darkness is going to cover the earth. Oh, yeah. And there's going to come a time that us, the bride, us, the beloved ones, us, the, the sons and daughters, that there's going to be a shaking, there's going to be a quaking, and it's going to be, how will you respond? Ooh, come on. How are you going to respond? 
You see, I want you to hear my heart when I say these things. <clears throat> how we respond is how the world is going to see us. I read something today a friend of mine wrote, and he said, We were not created <laughs> for the church. He said, We were created to bring change on the world. Now, listen that we would change the world. Jesus, how would we respond? And I ask this question because it may sound a little bit harsh, but I'll say this. Do you really believe? I'm, and I'm, I'm speaking to those that are watching right now. Do you believe? Do you really believe? Listen, do we truly believe the things that we say we believe as Christians? Because it's real easy to be a Christian when there's no persecution. It's real easy to be a Christian when there's no sickness. It's, it is. It's, it's one thing to, to, to say I'm a believer, Holy Ghost. Oh, I'm fire-filled. I've, I've got revival in my bone, and i got all this stuff. But the moment they say you can't preach, you zip up your mouth. You curl up like a, like a ball. So how do we respond? And, of course, this question I'm asking, it's, it's a question I want you just to ponder in. But do you truly believe? So before we get started, let's pray. <laughs> Jesus. Hot tea, come on. Mm. Father, we thank you, God. We thank you for this word, Lord. We thank you for the times. We thank you for the seasons, Jesus. Holy Spirit. We just thank you, Lord, that that you would be a, it would be a tangible and transferable anointing that would be released right now through media. That every person that's watching, that it would even go and it would pierce hearts right now. Let your breath come <laughs> right now in Jesus' name, Lord. Let every word that's not of you fall to the ground, but let every word that is of your heart, God penetrate hearts. Let us have ears to hear and eyes to see, God, what you're declaring this morning, right now, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You know, as the apostolic leader of this fellowship, we had to make decisions based on what the Spirit of the Lord was leading. And I say that because we could not and we cannot and we will not make decisions based on what the governmental authority is saying, what the local local or state is saying. Now, now, don't hear what I'm not saying. We abide by Romans 13, and, and, and I believe that we obey, obey the laws of the land. But what I'm saying is our first obligation is to God. It's to the Lord. It is to the Lord. So as we move forward in this thing, this pandemic that we're in, we had to make decisions based on what, what is it that you're asking us to do, God? And, and, and initially it was like, keep the doors open. Like, come on, because those who know me and those who don't know me, I'm that kind of guy. It's like I'm the revivalist. I'm the glory guy. I'm like miracles, signs, wonders, heal the sick, raise the dead. That's what I'll cast out the demons. Come on. That's how I believe. And because I believe like that, I'm like, listen, these doors are going to stay open. Come on. If we're going to keep the, how can we, how can we heal the sick if the doors are shut? That's right. Good question. How can we do it? So, the passion and the zeal and the revivalist and the evangelist inside of me says, these doors will not close. 
But you know, I believe there's timing and there's seasons in every one of us. Absolutely. Not only that, but there's portions to take that take place. And there's assignments and there's regional assignments. And us serving, when I say apostolic, listen, I, for those who are watching, I'm talking about the fivefold ministry. I'm talking about the prophets, the evangelists, the teachers, the, you know, the apostles. That's what I'm talking about. But to see the government of heaven being established here on earth. So whenever you begin to see an apostolic ministry being established in a region, it's because God has plans for the region. We didn't come to Bryan, Ohio to plant a church. Listen, that's not what happened. That's, that was never the plan. We were doing something. God knew what we were doing. But for whatever reason, he said, I want you to go, and I want you to plant a flag. And we came into this place, and this was going to be the outreach center. It was going to be an outreach center. Not knowing what God was doing. This was in September, I believe. Coming to an outreach center. Wow. Wow. Not knowing what he was doing, but we just say yes to we just said yes to God. But you, but you know, when you begin to to say yes to God, there's a bigger picture. God is in control. He knew that the coronavirus was coming. He knew it was coming. He knew that the people were gonna run scared. He knew he knew everything. He knew that we were gonna have to make decisions to keep the doors open, to keep them closed. He knew that everybody was going to go to media. He knew. So we come and we're, 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 we're planting a flag. I'm, I'm trying to backtrack a little bit. In us doing that, we didn't know what it was supposed to look like. We had no idea what we were what we were supposed to do, other than like every day was a new day. And uh, but see, God had a plan. And the reason why I'm sharing all this is because see, everything that God does is predestined, preordered. God pre he he knows what's gonna happen way before it happens. See, that's the problem that we have as humans is that we, we get so frustrated because we want to see the big picture. Because I guarantee you, if he shows us the big picture, we, we mess things up. That's what happens. We will, yeah. <laughs> Jesus. So, establishing... An apostolic house in a region, what happens is, y'all heard me say this before, is that the region begins to respond to what God is doing where that place is centered. And let me tell you what happens. It means that the, the city begins to respond to what God is doing. The city will begin to say, what is it? What's happening in that little place over there? There's something happening over there. God is doing something. And listen, because see, that's what happens when the apostolic, because what does it do? It brings, it brings order. It establishes order. Heaven's order becomes to become manifested. And we begin to see the favor of God become demonstrated. So in this, for those who are watching online, we're in a smaller city. We're in a small city community and the lord gave us blueprints because that we're asking you know we're praying because initially my response is like our doors are not going to close and i was praying and we're praying and we're asking the lord lord give us wisdom give us strategy god give us what is it how is it that you want us because how can we be effective in a time like this how can we because see we're called to be the light in a dark place if we look like the darkness how are we going to shine 
How can we be the light? How can we impact? How can you impact where you're at right now? You may be watching, you're listening. Like, how can I do something to help my city? What are you doing to be a light in a dark place? What's my portion, God? Let that be your prayer this morning. God, show me my portion. Show me my portion. So the Lord began to give us blueprints. And he began to show us, look, this is what we're going to do. Because, see, being in a small community, this is what happens. We could be the church that keeps our doors open, but the community will respond like, man, that's the place that didn't care about our community. And we would never want to do something that would let our goods be speaking evil of. Because that's not our heart. But the Lord showed us this. And I'm going to tell you how awesome God is. Because one month before this whole COVID-19 happened, the Lord said, I want you to plant another flag. And I want you to launch a food distribution ministry. I want you to launch a I want you to launch an outreach ministry. Not knowing what we were gonna do, not knowing how it was gonna look, not knowing where we were gonna do it, we just said, Okay, God. So we got another facility. Not knowing what was gonna happen. Not knowing, but just trusting God. You see, <laughs> We go through the season of our Josephs where the Lord will begin to send us what we need in the time that we need it. And being in an apostolic house, what happens is we are allowed to be a lighthouse. This is a lighthouse in a region. It is. So though we made a decision to close the doors of the building of the church, the Lord said, you are the church. Awesome. You're the church. And everywhere we go, we, we get to be that light. So though we decided to close the doors of the church building, the Lord said the doors of the outreach center will be flung wide open. And in that outreach, no longer do we become that group of people that didn't care about the community, but we become that group of people that loves the community. And we begin to be a blessing to the community. And guess what? When they come to the outreach center, we're going to have live worship. We're going to be laying the hands. We're going to be praying for the sick. We're going to have church in the outreach center. Because see, church in the building... Don't hear what I'm not saying when I say this, but I love, I love the fellowship. I love to, to hug our brothers and sisters. But listen, we need to go and be with the lost for the one. If we're not chasing after the one, what are we chasing after? What are we doing with what we've been, what we've been given? We have an inheritance of the kingdom of heaven, and we're just holding on to it, and we become spiritually obese because we do nothing with what's been given to us. We become spiritually obese. So I challenge you. You know... In this time, we see people, if the Lord is telling you to hide, then that's okay. But don't allow yourself to go into a place. Don't go into the cave out of fear. Don't allow yourself to go into that place of fear. Because I asked a question earlier on, do you believe? Because if you truly believe, I'm going to get you with this. Hold on. Jesus. Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father. See, what God is doing in this nation 
right now is bigger than what we see. What God is doing in this city is bigger than what we see. What God is doing in your city right now is bigger than what you see. Mm. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. You see, all throughout the New Testament, you see where, where the apostles would travel. And everywhere they went, they established the kingdom of heaven. And I'm going to speak to our local body when I say this, and, and I want to speak to you where you're at right now. The Lord has given you an assignment. He's given you a mandate from heaven. And if you don't know where that's in, I'm going to tell you it's in Matthew 10. Matthew 10, go. To preach the good news. Come on. Thank you, Lord. You know, we see them. They were, the, they were hunted. They were, they, were, they, were, they were persecuted. They were beat up. They were imprisoned. They were all these things that, that happened to the apostles. And they did it knowing that all these things could happen to them. But we find ourselves now acting as we're a persecuted church and we're afraid to go get groceries. Listen, I'm not saying uh, I'm not saying not to use wisdom, but what I'm saying is if what you're doing is being done because of fear, then you've already lost it. You've already lost it. Why did they do that? Why did, the, why did the apostles go from town to town establishing the kingdom of heaven? Why did they do it? Because they loved the Lord. And because they believed. They believed. Let's turn to John chapter 21. Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. John 21, I'm going to read out of verse 15. <clears throat> and it says, After breakfast, Jesus asked Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, Peter replied. You know I love you. Then feed my lambs, Jesus told him. Then Jesus repeated the question, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter says, yes, Lord. You know that I love you. And then Jesus, and then Simon, son of John, do you love me? He says, yes, Lord, you know I love you. And then Jesus tells him, then take care of my sheep. Then Jesus says a third time, and he asked him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter got hurt. It says he got hurt. It says he got hurt. Jesus asked a question a third time. He said, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Then Jesus said, feed my sheep. There's a generation right now out there that is dying. Right there where you're at in your city, there's a generation out there that is dying, waiting for you and I. Jesus is asking you this morning, do you love me? Yes, God, you know I love you. Then feed my sheep. No, no, no. Do you really love me? 
God, you know I love you. Then feed my sheep. And then God, Jesus asked again, do you love me? Do you really, really love me? And then we're, God, why are you asking me so many times? You know I love you. Then feed my sheep. Because if we believe, we'll have no problem feeding the sheep. We won't worry about what I'm going to get. I'm not, we're not going to worry about if I'm going to catch a cold. And I know you, you, you might say, oh, pastor, you're being irresponsible. No, I'm not being irresponsible. I'm being led by the Spirit of the Lord. And when the Lord says that, Greater is he that's inside of me than anything in this world. If you believe that, and I believe that, I believe that no weapon formed against me will prosper. No coronavirus, no flu virus. I believe that. Do you believe? Oh, that was back in the time of Jesus. We are in that time. Come on. When we become about the Father's business, He will take care of the rest. He will take care of the rest. Let's turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. <clears throat> Excuse me. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, I'm going to read out of verse 13. <clears throat> and we also thank God continually because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it not as human word, but as it actually is the word of God, which indeed at work in you who believe. <clears throat> that means this, the word of God is alive and it is in work inside of you and I who believe. That means that it's working inside of us because we believe. And if it's working inside of us, nothing can come against us. Yeah. Huh. So what does that even mean, right? What does it mean? The word of God is alive in you. What does that mean? <laughs> Let's turn to John 1.14. Come on. Holy Ghost. Shake Katie about Thank you, Father. You're so good. John verse 114 says, So the word became human and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. So what does it mean for God's word to be alive in you? The word became human and made his home amongst us. That it was full of unfailing love. When the word of God is inside of us, we are full of God's unfailing love. <laughs> Come on, man. Unfailing love. We are full of his faithfulness. And we have seen his glory. That means we are filled with his glory. And if we are filled with his glory, what comes in the glory? Everything. The glory of God resides inside of you and I. That means that everything that Jesus did and you can do. You can do. 
You know when the glory of God comes? When you're in the glory, it, everything becomes manifest. Listen, these are not just words that I'm saying, guys. I believe this. I live by this. I truly believe this. When the glory of God comes, we step into a whole other realm and heaven becomes manifested. Manifested. Man, I don't know if you can imagine what that looks like. It becomes manifested. Holy Ghost. Luke 4.18. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Luke 4.18 says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to bring the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim the captive, that the captives will be released and that the blind will see and that the oppressed will be set free and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. Come on, guys. That's now. The time of the Lord's favor is now. Why? For those who believe. Do you believe? That's what the question is. Just believe this morning. Just believe. It's simple. It's a phone. I know it's a phone. I believe it's a phone. I know it's a phone. Just believe it's that simple. We can look at Moses... And how God used Moses to do many, many exploits, right? right? The people, they witnessed the power. They witnessed the mighty hand of God move in front of them every day. Yet the people still didn't believe. Can you imagine? A fire by day. No, wait, a fire by night. In the cloud by day, they would travel. The Lord, you gave them light. He gave them shelter. The shoes on their feet grew as they walked. They never needed new shoes. The kids would get older. The shoes would grow with their feet. They were hungry. It would rain manna. They would wake up and there'd be baskets of manna by the tents. Every morning. God provided. And he, they still didn't believe. We've seen God do miracles. The people in the church, listen, we've got, a, we've got a, a body of church believers right now that are running in fear. They're running in fear. But yet they, they've heard the miraculous things of God and throughout their time, they're like, oh, Jesus this and Jesus that. Now's the time. Yes, this is the time Amen. that we get to be a light in a dark place, guys. You, Numbers 14, 11 says this. The Lord said to Moses, how long will these people treat me with contempt? How long will they refuse to believe in me? And in spite of all the signs I have performed among them. The opposite of believe is unbelief. The people in that time saw God do miracles and signs and wonders, and they still didn't believe. The spirit of unbelief came upon them. And because unbelief came upon them, they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. Unbelief is rooted in fear. Fear is the lack of faith. And faith and all of these leads to rebellion. Even in that time, we see they became fearful. The people, they, 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 they created their own God. We know the story. 
What did they do? They moved in rebellion. They moved in rebellion. Unbelief will cause you to move in rebellion. It'll cause you to make decisions and do things that are outside the character and the nature of God. Do you believe this morning? Because if you're not believing, or what are you believing in? Because if you don't believe in what the Word says, then you're moving in the spirit of unbelief. And unbelief is, a, is what? It's the spirit of, of rebellion. And what is rebellion? The spirit of witchcraft. But Matthew 21, 22 says this. If you believe, ha, 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 if you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. That's what the Lord says. I'm going to read that again. If you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. So my question is this. What are the things you're asking for in your prayers today? I'm not talking about your personal prayers like, woe is me, oh, I need a new car, oh, this, I need this, I need that. That's not what I'm talking about. Those are personal, those are, those are, I'm speaking about what has your prayer been for the season and the timing of what God is doing right now? Hmm. First Timothy 4.10 says this. That is why we labor and strive because we have put our hope in the living God who is the Savior of all people and especially of those who believe. Do you believe this morning? Because if you're saying you believe this morning, he's telling you that I have put my hope inside of you. The hope uh, of the living God. Where the hope is, there won't be unbelief. Because hope constantly says the best is yet to come. That's what it says. You cannot have unbelief if you have hope. Because when hope, when, when unbelief tries to talk, hope says, hey, the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. <laughs> right, come on, that's a good, that's good. That's the good news. <laughs> this is why the enemy does everything that he can to steal your hope and your joy. Proverbs 13, 12 says this. Hope deferred makes your heart sick. But a dream fulfilled is the tree of life. So what does that mean right there? It means that hope is being compared to a dream being fulfilled. Come on. Your, the hope of the Lord is that it's a dream being fulfilled. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's, I love that. Acts 16, 31 says this. <laughs> yeah, come on, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Lordy, Lordy, Lordy. I done just lost my place. 1631. Okay, here we go, Jesus. I just done did it. Um, Acts 1631 says, They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. You and your household. That word saved, it's not just speaking about being converted to, to, to be with the Lord. 
It's talking about everything that you could possibly be needing to be saved from. Every part of rescue, every infirmity, every sickness, every torment, every demonic spirit, anything that would come against the body of Christ, it says, if you believe, you will be saved. Do you believe? Do you believe? Uh, Jesus. Hebrews 11.11. Come on, I love the 111. Hebrews 11.11. Now faith is the confidence in what we hope for and the assurance about what we do not see. What are you hoping for today? What is your confidence in today? What are you assured in today? Hmm. Jesus. Because, see, I watch these briefings every day from the governor. And every day that I watch these things from the president, for the governor, everything is horrible. And what happens is, if I allow myself, I will put my confidence in what I'm hearing being spoken of. I will put my faith in what I hear them saying. When I hear them saying, oh, we're not going to be, we're not going to get out of this until maybe June or July. I don't put my confidence or my faith in that. I put my faith in the hope of the Lord. That's where we live from. That's where we, that's, that's what the Lord is saying. What are you putting your confidence in? What is our assurance today? What is, I'm going to tell you what it is. It's the word of the Lord. We said it from the very beginning. It's the word of the Lord. What the word of the Lord says, that is what you put your faith in. That is what you put your confidence in. That is what you put your assurance in. Holy Ghost. Every day they talk about the models of death. Well, by this date, and I keep hearing, this is going to be a very bad week for our nation. This is going to be a very hard time for us all. And I'm like, Lord, we can change this. And I'm like, this is going to be a great week, and things are going to change, God. And we come against all the speaking of the death. And we come against their models, God. We understand, God, that they're doing science and they're doing statistics and they're doing numbers, but they don't know the God that we serve. A God of power. 1 Corinthians 4.20 says, I am not a God of talk, but a God of power. And if we believe that, then we have our own model. We have our own statistics. What does the Lord say? He says, just believe. Just believe. Jesus. As believers, we must be full of hope and faith. We must not be moved by what we see, but rather by what God sees and says. So I ask you this question, do you believe? Hebrews 11.6 says this, without faith, it's impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. So what do you do in a time of chaos? You don't draw away from the Lord. You earnestly seek Him. You dig deeper. You go deeper. God, what's in your heart, God? 
What do you have for, for Ohio, God? What do you have for California, God? What do you got for all the cities in New York, God? Los Angeles, God? What do you have? What are you speaking? Because I know in the midst of everything, God has a bigger plan. He's got a bigger plan. He's not some weak God that sits on the throne just playing with his fingers. No, no. He's in control. He's in control. I'm going to be closing up. So I love uh, one of my favorite scriptures is John 11. And I'm going to read out of a uh, 39. Um, 39 verse 39 and 44. And this is Jesus going to see Lazarus. He's already died. And the woman's telling Jesus, I'm going to just paraphrase this part. And he's already been dead like four days. His body's in the smell. And then Jesus responds to her. And he says, Jesus responded, Didn't I tell you that you would see God's glory if you just believe? See, there's that word glory again. Glory and believe. They hold hands together. <laughs> I feel the glory now. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on. They hold hands together. And where the glory of God is comes when you believe. He says, didn't I tell you that, it, that you would see God's glory if you just believe? So then they rolled the stone aside. And Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, thank you for hearing me. You always hear me. But I said it out loud for their sake. For all the people standing here, so they would believe that you sent me. <laughs> Come on, man. That you sent me. Then Jesus shouted, Lazarus, come out. Oh, come out. And a dead man came out, and his hands and feet bound in the grave clothes, and his face wrapped in the head cloth. Jesus told him, unwrap him and let him go. Yeah, set, him free. set him free. But see, when you believe, you see the glory. And what does the glory do? It gives you the resurrection power. There's resurrection power in the glory. In the glory, there's presence. In the glory, there's miracles, signs, wonders, resurrection, power. So if we're in the glory, we can walk the streets and we'll see people resurrected from the dead. Because right now, there's a lot of spiritually dead people walking right now. And they're covered, and they're walking in fear. And they say things like, oh, no, you're too close to me. I had a pastor tell me that the other day. He said, six feet, six feet. I said, six feet, sorry. <laughs> Not today, devil. Resurrection. The glory. When we believe, we see the glory. The glory gives you access to everything that the throne carries. And then what happens is you get to go around and you need to tell people, take off your slave clothes. Take off the grave clothes. Take off those wrappings. Take off the bondages because you are set free today. Isaiah 40 
31 says this. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength and they will soar on the wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary and they will walk and not be faint. Come on. When you're walking in the hope of the Lord, you will soar. Come on. Got a couple more scriptures and I'm going to close up. Ooh, Holy Ghost. I'm stuck in the second closing. Here we go. Yeah. Jesus, thank you, Lord. I always do this to myself. Um, John 3.18 says this. Whoever believes in him. Come on, there's that word believe again. Whoever believes in him is not condemned. But whoever does not believe stands condemned already. Let's think about that. Those who don't believe, they stand condemned already. Not because of God. Because there's a void that's missing. Because they're not belief, they have unbelief. And because they have unbelief, fear comes. And because we've given access to fear, everything else that comes with fear comes and tries to rest upon you. It says, does not believe they have been condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only true Son. John 20, 27 says this. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here. <laughs> See my hands, reach out your hands and put them into my side. Stop doubting. Stop doubting. And then the last part it says, and believe. He walked with Jesus. And he still had a problem believing. That's how strong this spirit of unbelief is. That they walked hand in hand with the Lord and they still didn't believe. That's why it's important that you abide yourself with the, with the Lord. That we would be woven, like Colossians says, that we would be woven in this tapestry of love. John 20, 31. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. That by believing, you may have life in his name. So you mean to tell me not only do I get everything else, but if I believe, I get life? Do you believe? See, it's one thing to say we believe here. But it's another thing when we really say we believe. Believing is in everything. Believing is not just in what you do on a Sunday morning. Believing is not, is not just what you do when people are around. Believing is in everything. What about, what? oh, here's one. What about even in your giving? I believe, but I won't give. Uh-oh. Come on. <laughs> Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. You don't got to like me, but you do got to love me. Jesus, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father. Mark 1.15 says this. The time has come. He said, the kingdom of God has come. Repent and believe the good news. Believe the good news. That's pretty important that we believe what we say, right? Come on. <laughs> uh, Mark eleven twenty four. 24. I got two more scriptures. That's it. I'm going to pray. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, Believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Come on. That's good. Matthew 18, 6. 
if anyone causes one of these little ones, those who believe in me to stumble, it would be better for them to have a large milestone hung around their neck and to be drowned in the depths of the sea. So that means this to me. Jesus, God, the Father, is pretty, pretty serious about you believing. To the point that he says, if you cause one of my little ones to stumble in their belief. Father, we just thank you, God. I thank you, Lord, that that even now, Lord, that this word will just penetrate hearts, God. I thank you for those that are watching, those that will watch the replay, Lord. I thank you, Father, that that you're 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 working in us every day. Pray for our nation, God. We pray for our leaders, God. We pray for our president, God, for the government, for the local authorities, God. We pray for the cities, God. We pray for those that are that are in the front lines, God, the essentials, God, the hospitals, God, the doctors, the nurses, the, the assistants, God, every person, God, that you have in the front line, God. The pastors, God, even the pastors in the persecuted churches, God, even those that are really, really experiencing, God, the persecution, God. Lord, we lift them all up right now. And we thank you, God, that we trust you, God. But most importantly, God, that this morning, God, we agree with you. We agree with heaven. And this morning, even now, those are watching, that you would even say this prayer. Say, Father, I believe. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. <laughs>